The German army invaded Poland September 1st, 1939, marking what most historians consider to be the beginning of the Second World War. The German army was joined by the Soviet army invading from the east on September 17th, and the country of Poland was overmatched and overwhelmed in about a month of fierce fighting. But they never capitulated. The government escaped to Britain, formed a government in exile, and Polish forces continued to serve the Allied cause in both the east and the west, on the land, in the air, and on the sea throughout the course of the war. And of all those stories of heroism of the Polish forces in the Second World War, one early story truly demonstrates the tenacity of a people who refused to be defeated in spirit. The Orzel incident of 1939 and the amazing escape of the submarine called the Eagle deserves to be remembered. The Second Polish Republic was established on November 28, 1918, following the end of the Great War. Poland immediately recognized that the newly reconstituted nation would have to defend its borders, and that included the creation of a navy. The Republic received six torpedo boats of the German Navy as war reparations, creating a token fleet to protect the Republic's 90 miles of northern coastline that included no major seaports. The Republic embarked upon an expansion plan, largely designed around being able to defend the Polish coast from the Soviet Baltic Fleet. While the Republic had ambitious plans, funding those plans was difficult during the period of the Great Depression. The Navy built two ports and commissioned modern warships built in France, the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands, but funds were too restricted to develop the fleet that they sought. One answer came in 1923, when the Navy created a foundation, eventually called the Maritime Defense Fund, tasked with raising public funds to construct a modern submarine. The effort slowly grew to be more organized, doing everything from selling commemorative coins to collections via civic organizations, Boy Scouts, and churches. By 1935, enough money had been collected to consider a design. After considering other proposals, the Navy selected the Dutch Shipyard Union and commissioned two submarines, one built with the public funds raised by the Maritime Defense Fund and the other paid for by the state budget. To reduce costs, however, 85% of the cost would be paid in Polish agricultural products, mainly brewery barley. The submarines would be jointly designed by Polish and Dutch engineers and would be modern designs that included several innovations like more reliable hydraulic controls and an all-welded design with frames on the outer side of the body allowing more interior space. 84 meters long and displacing 1,110 tons on the surface, the vessels were well armed for their size, including a 105 millimeter Bofors deck gun and 12 550 millimeter torpedo tubes with a maximum load of 20 torpedoes. Powered by twin diesel-electric motors, the boats would have a surface speed of just under 20 knots and an operational range of 7,000 nautical miles. The vessel built with government funds would be constructed in Rotterdam and be called the ORP, meaning roughly Warship of the Republic of Poland, Seump, meaning Vulture. And the one built with the public raised funds would be built in Deskelda and called the ORP Orzel, or Eagle. The keel of Orzel was laid down in August 1936. The boat was launched in January 1938 and commissioned in February 1939. At the time, the Orzel was one of the most advanced submarine designs in the world. That, however, would not be nearly enough. When Germany invaded in September, the Polish Navy included just five submarines, four destroyers, one large mine layer, and a handful of smaller craft. They were significantly outmatched by the German Kriegsmarine. Realizing that they would be easy targets in the enclosed Baltic Sea, three of Poland's four destroyers left the Baltic Sea for England even before Germany declared war. The Polish submarines, however, were assigned to defend the Polish coast in an operation called the Vorek Plan, or Plan Sack. The submarines were to screen the Polish coast to prevent a German invasion of the coast and attack any German vessels bombarding Polish coastal fortifications. The submarines were instructed to conserve ammunition for significant vessels and to follow international law with regards to the sinking of ships, requiring that they notify unarmed ships before sinking. If the plan became unworkable, the submarines were to operate in the Baltic as long as possible and then seek to go to Britain or, in the worst case scenario, be interned in a neutral port. Eventually, three of the five submarines would be so damaged that they had to seek to be interned in ports in neutral Sweden, unable to make it to Britain. The mine-laying submarine ORP Vilk, or Wolf, managed the difficult journey to join the destroyers that had escaped to Britain. But the Orzel would have what British Prime Minister Winston Churchill described as the greatest adventure story to come out of the war. The Orzel left its sector for the Baltic Sea on September 4th, but was identified and attacked by two German M-class minesweepers. A depth charge exploded directly above the submarine, causing an oil leak and other damage. The Orzel escaped under the cover of darkness, but needed repair. Moreover, Captain Heinrich Koichkowski fell ill with a mysterious illness, possibly typhus or appendicitis. 
The captain decided to seek a neutral port, but instead of Sweden, he opted to head to Tallinn in Estonia, possibly because he was familiar with the port, having studied there. The Orzel arrived in the neutral port, with its medieval skyline, on September 14th. The Estonians, themselves trying to maintain their neutrality, may not have been happy to see the Polish vessel, but under a provision of the Hague Convention intended to prevent fighting in neutral nation's waters, a boat from a belligerent nation could stay in a neutral port for 24 hours. At first the Estonians welcomed them. Koikoski was taken to the hospital and they aided in repairs. A German merchant vessel was already in port and by the rules of the convention the submarine had to wait 24 hours after the vessel left before it could leave, which extended the stay to 48 hours. But the next day, an Estonian naval officer with an armed guard arrived and informed the first officer, Lieutenant Jan Grudzinski, now in charge of the crew, that the Orzel was to be interned. Pressured more by the Germans than by the law, the Estonians started the next day to disarm the vessel. They confiscated all the navigational charts, the crew's sidearms, the ammunition for the guns, and they took down the Polish flag. There was a brief visit from the British naval attaché, but the Estonians wouldn't let him on board. He managed to slip his business card to one of the Polish sailors. On the back was written, good luck, God bless you. Grudzinski and the crew decided they did not want to remain in Estonia. They formed a plan. Grudzinski kept up a show of cooperation while the crew prepared. While 14 of the 20 torpedoes had been removed, on the 18th the crew sabotaged the ropes of the equipment needed to remove the stern torpedoes, delaying the Estonians for another day. A crewman spent the 17th fishing in a boat, which the Estonians considered not threatening and allowed. Under the guise of fishing, he sounded the harbor for an escape route for the submarine. At nightfall, the mooring cables were cut halfway through. The plan was to leave at midnight on the 18th, but an Estonian officer arrived, suspicious, and stayed for nearly an hour and a half until he was convinced that the crew was not planning anything. Finally, at around 3, Grudinsky gave the order to attempt the escape. Crewmen surprised and overpowered one Estonian guard atop the conning tower of the moored submarine. In the control room below, a second guard found himself staring into the muzzle of a revolver. Soon both were bound and gagged. Crewmen wielding axes quickly cut the electrical cable the nearest searchlight and the telephone wires. Next they finished cutting through the mooring cables and the Orzel moved away from the dock. The dramatic escape occurred just 17 days after Adolf Hitler had triggered the Second World War by invading Poland. But the boat quickly ran aground on a sandbank and the Estonians, alerted to the escape, started shooting with machine guns. The searchlights came on, eventually finding the boat as artillery fire began from port fortifications. Luckily, the fire was inaccurate and the boat received only minor damage. Grudzinski reversed the engines and the submarine pulled free and made for deep water. She spent the following day on the bottom, now hunted by the Kriegsmarine. In the escape and the Estonian fire, her radio equipment had been damaged and the boat was now more than 2,000 kilometers from Britain. Much of that was teeming with enemy vessels looking for her and she had no navigational charts. Grudzinski headed for Sweden where he could drop off the two Estonian guards they had taken. The German and Estonian press declared them dead at sea, but they were actually provided with clothing, money, and food. Grudzinski hoped to capture a German merchant vessel and take its charts, but the only ships they encountered were warships. A German plane attempted an attack, but the submarine managed to escape into deep water. They were sighted once by a German vessel, but apparently mistaken for a Swedish submarine on a neutrality patrol. Grudzinski was determined to fight on as long as he could, but no targets presented themselves. With the ship low on fresh water and damaged from the escape, including a bent propeller shaft and damage to her directional steering, he decided to make for Britain. Without charts, all they had was a list of lighthouses, which they used to navigate along the Baltic coast and around Denmark. On October 14th, the boat reached the coast of Scotland and, submerged to avoid attack by the Allies, managed enough emergency repairs to the radio to send a message. The British were stunned, assuming that the Orzel had long since been sunk. A British destroyer escorted them into port. 43 days after they left port in Poland, 26 days after their daring escape from Tallinn, and 8 days after the last units of the Polish army had surrendered at home. In port, they were welcomed by Henry Kaminski, captain of the OPS Wielk, the only other of Poland's five submarines, to make it to Britain. The extraordinary escape and journey of the Orzel was announced by the Allies in December, providing much needed good news for the Allies during a difficult year with few successes to tout. The Orzel was repaired and ready for service on December 1st and began patrols as part of Britain's second submarine flotilla. On April 8th, 1940, the Orzel encountered a German merchant vessel called the Rio de Janeiro. When the vessel tried to run, Orzel sank her with torpedoes, becoming the first Polish ship of the war to sink an enemy vessel with a torpedo. Unknown to the submarine at the time was that the ship was part of Operation Visirobung, the planned invasion of Norway. 
The boat was on a secret mission and was full of German troops, and the rescue of survivors might have warned Norway that an attack was imminent. Unfortunately, by the time the information worked its way through Norwegian channels, it was too late to be helpful. The Orzel continued service with the second submarine flotilla until June, when, while on her seventh patrol, the brave vessel, which endured such an adventure, simply vanished without a trace, along with her entire crew of 54. The Polish government managed to escape to Britain and form a government in exile, and with them they managed to take the country's gold reserves, which financed their efforts throughout the Second World War. The Polish Navy, supplemented by ships that were leased from Britain, made great contributions to the war in the Atlantic. They participated in the action to sink the German battleship Bismarck in 1941. They escorted convoys in the Battle of the Atlantic, and they supported the invasion of Normandy in June of 1944. The Soviets asserted that the Estonians must have helped the Orzel to escape and used that as a pretext to force a treaty upon Estonia that allowed the Soviets to build bases in Estonia. Later that year, the Soviet Union invaded and occupied Estonia. Estonia would suffer greatly during the Second World War. An estimated one quarter of the population of the country died in the conflict. The original captain of the Orzel, Heinrich Kloivskowski, eventually was captured by the Soviets in Estonia and then managed to make it to England after the Soviet Union joined the Allies. He was tried for desertion for his actions in taking the Orzel to Tallinn, condemned in a letter by the remaining officers. He was convicted and dismissed from the Navy. The disappearance of the Orzel is the great mystery of the Polish Navy. It's generally assumed the submarine must have run into a mine, but without finding the wreck, we can never know for sure. Several expeditions have been sent to try to identify the wreck of the Orzel, but the North Sea is a vast graveyard full of wrecks from the two world wars. And as of the filming of this episode, the wreck of the Orzel has still not been found. It seems that the greatest adventure story to come out of the war has ended with a question mark. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.